All right, well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at Beach Park Baptist Church for our virtual Sunday school lesson. Uh, I hope that you are doing well today. It is Sunday, the 21st of February, and um, we are going through our lesson today in our book. So if you have that, grab your book and your Bible, and we'll go through 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 today uh, as we are talking about connecting to the body of Christ. And so uh, as we go through our lesson today, I want to know that uh, next Sunday, is going to be our first Sunday back in person Sunday school. So on February 28th, we'll be back in person for our Sunday school lesson. Not sure what we're going to do about our, our recordings and such, but we'll kind of come up with a plan of action for that. But um, I hope that you can join us for that. Uh, bring your mask. We've got uh, social distancing procedures going through the Sunday school classrooms. And so um, I know that we're excited to get back together. We've been in person for a couple weeks in our worship service at 11. Uh, We've got some tape on the seats and spread out to where we can uh, be a little bit safe inside the the worship service. Back in our children's department, we've done some things to to be safe in our uh, procedures. And so we'll start back next Sunday with our in-person Sunday school service. And uh, that'll start at 945. And again, we've we've taken some precautions as far as our Sunday school time. So I hope that you can join us. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read... Uh, 12 verses here as we start in verse 12. Uh, We're talking about the body of Christ. And and today the point of our lesson is spiritual growth called for regular interaction uh, with and ministry to other believers. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says this, for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized in the body where whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God sent or set the members of every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now... Are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need but God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to the parts which lacked and so as we talk about connecting to the body of Christ today uh, Paul did his best to kindle this relationship with the people of Corinth as uh, they didn't have the best relationship Paul has heard of the body of Christ in Corinth is kind of in disarray. And so he's kind of writing them and encouraging them. He's talking about spiritual gifts and and talking about the body as as we kind of work together uh, for that focus, that purpose of spreading the gospel of Jesus. And so um, God has designed the church as the one united body. And Paul talks about the oneness of of the church. In fact, he talks about the one several times, six different times throughout these verses, uh, making this the one mission, the one body of Christ, a focal point of these scripture passages. And so all believers are part of the body of Christ. We're working together to be one Christ, one body of believers. Um, Even though we might be part of different churches, we're still working together uh, to be a body of Christ. And so we are all very different. I love to look around on Sunday mornings now that we're back in person and just see the, the different families, the individuals that are here. And, and as I was thinking about this lesson and working through Sunday, I was thinking, man, we've got a lot of talented people 
uh, in our church of very different skill sets, very different um, attitude and demeanors. We have a lot of introverts in our church. We have a lot of extroverts in our church. Uh, we have people that uh, want to do things um, in the spotlight as far as ministry goes. But then we have people that want to do things on the background and, and be in the background of different ministries. And when I mean spotlights, I'm saying there's people that are willing to be Sunday school teachers, uh, stand in front of a group of people and teach the Bible. Um, we have a, a group of pastors in our church. We have people that are willing to, to uh, sing in the choir. And, and these spotlights, man, they're bright. And we want to be able to see the choir singing together as one body leading us in worship. And uh, we have people that are willing to sit in the congregation and uh, to, to absorb the sermon, to, to absorb the Sunday school lessons. And then uh, they go out and they do ministry in their lives and the people that they work with and the people that they uh, live with in their family and stuff. And so uh, we are all very different in our skill sets. We have people that are very good with crafts and very um, energetic and, and crafty in, in the way that they um, set up things for Vacation Bible School. And uh, I love it when, when we get for, uh, ready for Vacation Bible School. I mean, there's a lot of creative people in our church that um, can get some things together for the kids. And it's just amazing to watch those skill sets come to life. And um, there's some teachers that are very good at that large group. And then there's some teachers that are very good with just uh, four or five students together working individually with them. And so we have many different people with many different skill sets. The, the uh, amazing part is to watch it all work together for the body of Christ, for that purpose, that focus that we have in our church. And so Paul is talking about the diversity a lot in the, the scripture as he talks about believers are both Jews and Gentiles. Uh, he also makes reference to social standings as he talks about the free and the people that are bonded in slavery. And uh, we've got to think about the, the timeline of this scripture, the letter that's been written as it is in first century Judaism. Um, there were Jews and Gentiles. And then there's also the Roman world that was talking about uh, free and slaves. And so no matter what divided the people before, Paul is, is giving them encouragement, understanding that they are now the, the, the body of Christ as they are all from different backgrounds. I thought about our church and how uh, we have people that have been in this area their whole lives and the people that have moved in from outside this area to, to live in this East Tennessee uh, Tri-County area. And so uh, we've been blessed. And we can see how at this time, uh, many people, as we're talking about um, the body of Christ in this time, uh, as Paul is writing, um, there was a lot of struggles in the social differences with ethnicity and social standings. But Paul talks a lot about how they all are one in the body of Christ now. And so in our body, in our church, in our community, uh, we are all very different, but we're working together. We're one body in the church. And uh, Paul talks about spiritual gifts through 1 Corinthians. And we understand that spiritual gifts are something that we focus on uh, probably about once a year in our Sunday school lessons as we go through. And uh, there may be some spiritual gifts test. Uh, I know for me, I am spiritually gifted in acts of service and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, I do okay with the large groups and things, but I really love to, to get an individual, a teenager, a college student, and just kind of mentor them individually as I, I have the time and ability. And so uh, I know that um, many times when we are kind of overseeing individuals and people, I love the teenagers as middle school and high schoolers, when they start to understand their spiritual gift. And then when you start to see them grow in their faith and courage and boldness and watch them um, use those spiritual gifts in life, it's rewarding. And I know that some of their families are also blessed to see that. But uh, I love how um, some of our kids have really stepped out in faith and our teenagers, some that are graduating this year, uh, have really dealt with some unprecedented times in their life. Uh, a lot of times we can say, oh, when we were a senior, we did this, this, and this in our high school. But they're going through some things that we've never been able to go through uh, as we've gone through this worldwide pandemic. And so I've watched some of them and how they've handled that. And I'm just encouraged. And I think they're really ready for adulthood. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited to watch them as they uh, step out in their faith, step out into their next journey. And so uh, 
think about our spiritual gifts as far as believers in our church. Um, um, we can have some dividing factors in our church. If, if we have seven pastors in our church all wanting to preach on Sunday morning, then, then we're going to struggle with our, our united worship service. But we need one pastor. And then from there, we need lots of people to be servants. We need Sunday school teachers. We need people to work back in the children's department. We've got people that need to sing in the choir. We, we have people. We don't need, uh, just like if you were to go to the dentist office, you don't need seven dentists checking your, what's going on in your mouth. You need one dentist to check you out. And you need one technician to help clean you up and, and really give you a good cleaning. You don't need all of those people at one time. Same thing in our church. Uh, we don't need seven pastors. We need one pastor to present the word. And then we need several Sunday school teachers. We need people that will be willing to uh, set up and break down after events. We need people just to, to, to serve in different areas of ministries, whether they are in the spotlight or not. Uh, we need people just to serve uh, in the church and also in the community as we go through different things in our efforts. And so just like the human body made of many parts working together. Uh, the, the other day I was struggling um, with some hand-eye coordination stuff. Like I just felt like I was dropping everything. I was in the kitchen kind of working on some things, doing some dishes, getting some sandwiches and lunches together. And I finally quit when I dropped the sharp knife and I thought, you know, my toes are gonna thank me, but maybe it's just time I, I step back for just a minute and do something different and then come back to that work in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we got to understand our strengths and weaknesses. We have to understand when we are being helpful or when we're being hurtful to the body of Christ. And so same thing in our ministries. We've got to understand where we fit in and where we go and where we work best and then how we can help the overall body of Christ. And so we've got to uh, really focus on a lot of that personally, but also uh, with our group, with our church. Um, in the church, if, if people are working against each other, then we're not going to get much ministry done. Ministry and our focus is to point others to Jesus Christ, their actions and reactions. And so uh, we have many different church ministries. Uh, we've got to be cautious about um, making sure that they're all doing that purpose for Jesus Christ. And so um, all have a purpose and a mission statement. It takes a team of believers working together within the church to, to spread the gospel to share the gospel. Uh, there are some individuals in our church that are really good at that uh, servant. They are good at going out and helping those in the community. Uh, they're very skilled in their trades and their, their carpentry and their, their, their skill sets. And I've learned a lot from them based on just us having the opportunity to serve others. And I'm thankful for those relationships. And I'm thankful for the, pen, the men and women that um, use their talents for the Lord. So every believer plays an important part of the body of Christ. Every believer plays an important part. Um, just as the pastor, Brother Robbie, um, he is skilled in teaching and preaching. And so as he is teaching and preaching his spiritual gift, uh, not everyone has that gift. But we can take what he's been gifted and use that as we are growing in our faith and our knowledge of the Bible and then how we can best fit in the body and serve God through our lives. And so God made each Christian a necessary part of the body. And Paul emphasized the importance of the church body as we need to show respect to one another uh, instead of arrogance, strife, and division. Remember our focus to point others to Jesus Christ with our lives that um, through our words, our actions and reactions that people are watching. And as body of believers, we are to encourage one another and not hurt one another. Um, it gives us a couple things in the book for us to kind of finish our lesson today about living it out. Um, it gives us one, it says, talk to someone new. As we are back into our in-person worship, if you see somebody that you don't quite know or that you uh, are not familiar with them, then go and speak to them. Of course, we've got masks that are available and we can social distance, but there's nothing wrong with introducing yourself and getting to know someone new uh, during this time. So talk to someone new, both in our church and in the community, build that relationship with them. And then it talks about restoring a relationship. There might be someone that you are in odds with, or you might have um, dealt with them in some different manners, and maybe you just need to get together and talk it out. 
Uh, maybe you need to confess some wrong attitude or wrong behavior and seek to restore the relationship uh, with them. And then the third thing, it says step out and serve. Man, this is a great one. Step out and serve in a ministry within the church, within the community. Uh, I'll put some information on the screen if you want to reach out to me this week and, and just, you know, how can you be of service? Um, there's different things in the community I can send your way. I can give you some things in our church, some ministries that you can get involved in that I think would be great for, for you and or your family members that can help you get plugged in. And so uh, step out and serve. And um, again, you can reach me on some of that information I'll put on the screen. So let's work together as the body of Christ. Believers, not just part of the church, but part of the faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And let's spread the gospel of salvation to all that we meet this week. And so let's work together and let's be one body for Christ.